Hello, my name is Sam, uh, Samuel Bouchard, and I'd like to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference at Johns Hopkins University for giving me this opportunity to talk about something I've been really passionate about. Um, so I'll be presenting about implementation science, the missing link in global health research. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a rising junior at Westview High School located in Portland, Oregon. Um, and here are some of the activities and clubs that I'm involved in. Uh, I really like the intersection between public policy, politics, uh, and speech, and also medicine, biology, and public health. And I think global health is a really good combination of those two. Um, some of my hobbies include language learning. I mostly learn Korean, but I like try to switch it up with Japanese and Spanish, uh, and of course, English. Um, I enjoy cycling and playing my alto saxophone. So implementation science, what is it and why should we care? I wanna first open up with an example. So um, a few years ago, there were trials done studying the efficacy of the collaborative care model or CCM in bipolar disorder treatment versus the traditional model. Um, and the CCM was found to have significant positive impact in patient mood, quality of life, satisfaction with care, all at a little to no cost, uh, additional cost for healthcare providers. Um, this study was published into many prestigious psychiatry journals in the US and Canada as well. But on a follow-up to these sites about a year after the studies were published, it was found that the clinicians who had participated in the CCM had reverted back to the traditional model. And the individuals with bipolar disorder went back to receiving their usual form of care. None of the sites involved had incorporated the CCM into their workflow. And so the question being asked is, what went wrong? And I hope I can demonstrate how implementation science can be used to overcome obstacles such as these. Um, so implementation science. Implementation research is the scientific study of methods to promote the systematic uptake of research findings and other evidence-based practices into routine practice, and hence to improve the quality and effectiveness of health services. It includes the study of influences on healthcare professional and organizational behavior. The goal of implementation science is not to establish the health impact of a clinical innovation, but rather to identify the factors that affect its uptake into routine use. And so I think this is better demonstrated with an example. Um, pictured here is a wet market located in Eastern Asia. Um, and these wet markets have been known to be breeding grounds to many zoonotic viruses, uh, COVID-19 just recently. And so um, if you look on the left, you can see uh, an live animals being stored next to slaughtered meat. There are tools being left on the ground and none of uh, the workers are wearing any gloves. And so there's an obvious need for more regulation and more sanitation. Um, these markets, however, are central to how these communities function and their value is ingrained within the local culture. So implementation science tries to find out how to solve issues such as sanitation regulation without stifling the open and free culture that without stifling the open and free culture that developed in many of these uh, markets. Um, another example of implementation science can also be seen with the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, there was a major bottleneck when vaccines were first being rolled out as distributors needed to keep in mind many factors such as supply, cost, storage, and stock for middle to low income countries. So the current role of implementation science and research pipeline. Um, so the current research pipeline focuses mainly on efficacy and effectiveness studies, um, and little time is spent on actual implementation research. And so some stats, one third of 266 US-based public health researchers rated implementation efforts as poor, 73% spent less than 10% of their time on implementation, half had de a designated person for implementation, and only one third involved stakeholders in the research process. And so you can see here that there's a lot of disparities in the current role of implementation science, in the current research pipeline. And these disparities lead to what's known as the no-do gap, or the gap between what we know, what's circulating around the scientific community, what's been researched, and what we do, and what's uh, practiced clinically. And so this implementation gap is often referred to as the 17-year odyssey, because uh, it can take from between 17 to 20 years for an evidence-based intervention, or EBI, to be moved um, from research into practice. And um, only a small fraction of these EBIs even make it uh, into practice, a very small percent. And so uh, main takeaway is that it takes around 17 years to turn 14% of original research to the benefit of patient care. So you can see that there is a, a lot of loss of investment um, as well um, in these. And so I guess to summarize my main points, Discovery of interventions of new practices does not directly lead to the use of knowledge and integration um, into clinical settings. Uh, evidence does not lead to uptake. There's a huge gap between 
what we know it's being researched and what's actually being practiced. Um, implementation science also provides a lot of accountability of research investment and actually shows the impact. And so billions and billions of dollars are sunk into research grants every year. And um, uh, so it's, we need to ensure that there's an actual impact and that the, the research is, being, is mo being moved into practice and, being, and affecting the uh, stakeholders involved in the research studies. Uh, and there's a huge wealth of information available to impact population health. We know a lot of things uh, and a lot of things have been researched. And so moving that as quickly, as po quickly and efficiently as possible into practice is a, is a big priority of implementation science. Um, and since this is my last slide, I wanna relate it back to global health. So strong research and implementation is crucial for implementers to move EBIs into practice efficiently. This transition into practice is the cornerstone of development in the global health sector and subsequently will advance the goal of health equity for all. I'd like to thank my teachers at school. I would not be here without their support. Um, and lastly, I'd like to introduce an organization I'm running with some amazing other students from around the world called the One Health Hackathon. Uh, we are a global health competition where you can hear from world-renowned experts in global health and work together to tackle real outbreaks in teams of two to four. And solutions can be business pitches, tech prototypes, policy proposals and more, and participation is completely free of charge. Um, at OHH 2020, we had three, 300 signups from 22 different countries. And this is a map showing uh, the current signups for OHH 2021. Uh, we just opened registration and we already have people from 24 different countries. And so this is a really good opportunity to meet uh, a lot of other people from around the world that are interested in global health. Um, and so, if you have any questions, here's my contact information. Thank you so much for your time.